Hello, this is Bill McKenzie, editor of The Catalyst. Today we have with us Mark McKinnon, co-creator of The Circus, the hit Showtime look at the making of the presidency 2016. Before that, the Texan was a strategist for the presidential campaigns of George W. Bush and John McCain. And to be bipartisan about this, he has advised such Democrats as the late Ann Richards and the late Charlie Wilson. He also has been a co-founder of No Labels, a columnist, and editor of The Daily Texan. Mark, thank you for being here with us on The Catalyst. So you are out watching and listening to voters. Um, why is there such pushback against uh, some kind of immigration reform and about greater legalization of people moving across borders? Uh, I think it's driven primarily by fear. And uh, there's economic insecurity that's driving this. But I'll tell you, in 30 years of politics, it's, it's the hottest issue I've ever seen. Hmm. And interestingly, one of the issues that attracted me to, to George W. Bush in the 90s was that he was very pro-immigration reform, and that's pro-immigration reform and education reform, and those are, t and I felt passionately about those, and it was because of his, he, he was a Republican and a very different kind of Republican talking proactively about immigration, and that's what drew me to support him in the first right. place. But why is it such a hot issue today? Fear. I mean, yeah. I think it is driven fundamentally by economic insecurity. People think that their jobs are being taken. And there's a terrorism component right. to it now. You overlay the terrorism component. But I also worked for John McCain, and I remember when he ran, his campaign melted down over the issue of immigration because he was fairly uh, pro-immigration at right. the beginning of this campaign anyway. And it, it, I remember coming back on the airplane on Thursdays from Washington to Texas and the c congressional delegation from Texas just beating me up about McCain and right. immigration. So is this fear uh, pretty widespread across the country you're training, or is it more acute in some parts of the country? Uh, it's pretty widespread. I mean, I, you know, I'd, I'd say that there are pockets where it's hotter, certainly in border states and, and maybe sort of industrial states where job and uh, unemployment is up. Right. But it, I, I've been surprised by it. I really right. have been it, because it, uh, it, it's deeper and hotter than, as I said, any issue that I've ever seen in my, in my political life. So along those lines, there's also this resistance against uh, international trade. Yeah. Uh, and to some extent, I get that. Jobs are lost, but many jobs are also created. And if you look out here at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, people are hopping on planes all the time to go somewhere to do business. Yeah, I think uh, at the bottom, it's a failure to communicate because, again, free trade is an issue that drew me to be a Republican in the first place. I just, I fundamentally believed in the idea of free trade. That was a kind of a core Republican idea. And now, interestingly, in, in this election, suddenly that's all changing. Even Republicans and some of the leading people in the, in the, in the nomination fight are anti-free trade, which right. is just kind of shocking to me because all the data, all the data shows that it is a plus, really. I mean, you just can't refute it if you really look at the data about what free trade has done. And you just can't put that genie right. back in the bottle. And if you do, you know, we get into trade wars and tariffs. Right. And kind of so when you're out there and you're filming the circus and you're listening to, to voters in town halls or um, in, in various locales, uh, does this issue pop up a good bit? Oh, a lot. Yeah. I mean, immigration and trade, especially, I just came from, uh, I've been in Ohio and Wisconsin. That's all they're talking about. I mean, right. trade is a big issue up there, and again, I, it's, it's become huge in the Democratic primary, and it's big in the Republican primary. Right. And, and uh, it's it's hard to be a pro free trader anymore in politics in this in the current right. political. And, and, and all of this, on one level or another, is related to openness and what kind of open society we have. Yeah. Uh, and you think about this, you know, we have the free flow of ideas that go across borders. You can't stop that. You yeah. know, innovation crosses borders. Yeah, it does, and. and you know, we have a open system. The internet's a big part of that, and that's never going to change. We're not going back. So, uh, you know, my view is we should embrace that and all its opportunities. Uh, at the same time, we have these political forces pushing back violently on it that relates to jobs and, I think, international terrorism. Right. You know, both those forces are, are dramatic and emotional forces that are creating a very hot issue. So uh, you are, you're, you're big on narratives and on storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is the narrative that changes uh, this movement uh, that you're talking about? What is the, what's the, the narrative that uh, changes the, the, the resistance to globalism and globalization? It requires leadership. You know, it requires political leadership and people to take the mantle and win elections on those issues. I mean, elections right. have consequences. And uh, I think there's a, uh, my worry is that there's a real short-term view here about, you know, the advantage that running against trade 
can be electorally without looking at the real consequence to what it does to our society and truly to our economy in the long run. Right. Uh, but, it, but it requires somebody standing up, planting the flag, and making the case. Right. And uh, right now, just the opposite is happening. Right.